Welcome back to our video and today we are back from the NFL video this time discussing a player I think has potential to have a phenomenal season uh, and that is John Mechie and so there's a lot to talk about when it comes to John Mechie uh, so we're just going to start out with when he got drafted so basically back in 2022 in the 2022 NFL draft I should, I should say he was selected 44th overall from Alabama uh, and then they have of course right here they have him listed as 5'11", 187 pounds. Now he is he was coming off an ACL tear at the time but was still an incredible receiver at Alabama. Uh, I believe he had over 2,000 yards in his previous two seasons at Alabama. Uh, and then, of course, if maybe you haven't heard, maybe you did and maybe you just forgot about him. I don't really know. But then I believe as of July last year, uh, he found out that he actually was diagnosed with leukemia. So he had to miss all of 2022-2023, um, which would have been his rookie season. And, of course, he also was coming from the ACL tear. But now it seems like he actually has the opportunity to play this season, which is first off incredible, uh, not only from ACL tear, which is not easy, but also having to deal with leukemia. So coming off both those is absolutely it's absolutely amazing really um and i'm not really sure if you if it's even really possible not to root for this guy after everything um and i think he's going to be a great player uh maybe not this next year but here's why i'm going to talk about what this really means for him going into this specific year and maybe the year after so basically D'Amico ryan's the texans new head coach not too long ago just said that john uh, is doing well, and I will have the exact quote on the screen, but he was essentially saying that he should be able to participate in the offseason program, uh, and of course, just like any other player, they're going to be taking it uh, day by day, which of course, you know, is the answer you would assume when it comes to a player with as many questions, uh, at least health-wise, that he has, but I want to go back to his, uh, I guess, prospect kind of grade and everything, because maybe you forgot about this guy, because uh, I mean, I feel like a lot of the Texans, the kind of focus on the Texans this past season was getting their quarterback which you know understandably so but I think we may have forgot about a very good target for that new quarterback whenever whoever he was and now we know it's CJ Stroud so that could be John Mechie uh and of course you know if you guys are big into fantasy football maybe in like your final rounds when this guy's still sitting there maybe you pick him up just in case maybe you don't I'm not the biggest fantasy football guy uh i think last year was my biggest year really getting into it and i think i'm going to continue that for now on so it's pro probably i would assume it's a bit of a risk to take him uh, at all but i do think there's a lot of potential here so i am actually going to go through his original prospect grade and all this so they had him as a 6.18 so 6.18 uh is, which is a good backup with the potential to develop into a starter which i think is going to be very key here as we talk through things uh, he had a 77 production score with a only with a 62 athleticism score and then 79 total. And he was the 10th uh, best wide receiver, I guess, with that score in the 2022 draft. So that there's all that. Uh, we have an overview and analysis down here. I want to focus on some of these strengths and the weaknesses. And I am going to zoom in because I'm not sure how this is going to look on camera. But hopefully my face cam doesn't cover any of this up right here. Whether his strengths, so experience running a pro caliber route tree, attacks press leverage and defeats it, route instincts unlock additional moves to get what he needs, snaps off route breaks at crisp angles, gets his numbers turned to passer on slants and cross in crossers, good downfield focus and ball tracking, improved his contested catch success in 2021, which was the previous year, of course, for him in college, worked his way back to the ball on hitches, drive routes. Possesses toughness needed for the job and talent to add yards after the catch. There's a lot there, and there's a lot, a lot of things there that are really needed at the next level, like the toughness needed for the job, which you know you really can't teach. Uh, a lot of times, it either has to come with experience, but really, that's one of those things that's just kind of intangible. It seems like uh, talent to add yards after the catch is another huge thing in the NFL because you got to think that when you're in college and a receiver's open, that is not the same thing as a when a receiver's open in the NFL. The difference between the defense on the receiver, unless like a busted coverage, is usually much tighter in the NFL at the next level. So being able to catch the ball and get more yards off of it is a huge, huge plus as a receiver. Um, and th th yeah, th there's a lot of stuff here. Of course, good downfield focus and ball tracking. Obviously, you need that as a receiver, which is you know great for him. But that paired with him, uh, as they put it, I think it was improved his contested catch success. That's pretty big uh, right there. But we do get to his weaknesses. So suffered ACL tear in December, looks smaller than his listed size, average release speed into the route, lacks explosiveness to accept. Wow. Okay. I'm going to say that one again. Lacks explosiveness to separate out of turns and stems, 
pre-brake head turn has become a route tell, lacks size and length to outreach corners down the field, suffers from focus drops as a body catcher. So again, there are weaknesses here that are going to hurt, hurt him at the next level. As we talk about with, with the strengths, that is like a huge plus side. He does have some downsides. Uh, I would say lacks explosiveness to separate up turns and stems is a big one. Uh, you really want to be able to you know, be explosive. That's, that's why they do those tests. That's a huge thing right there. Um, I wouldn't say lack size and length to outreach corners down the field is the biggest issue if you're able to still, uh, you know, get open through routes and all that kind of stuff with his route running. But again, if he lacks explosiveness, you know, paired, it's not great. But despite all this, they still ended up giving him the grade that we saw earlier as a 6.18, which is a good backup with the potential to develop into a starter. Now, I think, and of course, also on the weaknesses, they didn't, you know, have him listed as having like, you know, leukemia and everything, so it hadn't happened yet. But obviously, you know, that's another health uh, concern going into this season. But it seems that he's doing really, really well. Uh, I've heard that, you know, all during this kind of journey, there's things saying he's making great strides. And now D'Amico Ryan's in the offseason, him saying that he's able to participate uh, in the offseason stuff is a huge, huge sign. Uh, it's a really great sign. And, you know, when I say breakout, I'm not saying 1,500 yards this season. I mean, it's going to be his first year playing the NFL off an ACL tear and leukemia. So I think a breakout would be, honestly, for him, probably 500 yards or more because you got to think they have a rookie quarterback as well. So here's the thing, though. Here, here's why I think he has the opportunity, though, to really be a huge target this year uh, if he's able to really, you know, bounce back from all his health concerns. Uh, and play what he's you know kind of starting to be expected to play at least being hoped to play because the Texans so they got Dalton Schultz as a tight end from Dallas uh, they still have Nico Collins they traded Brandon Cooks they got Noah Brown they got Robert Woods and now of course you know they still have John Mechie now Robert Woods Nico Collins Noah Brown and John Mechie is not the craziest wide receiver room in the world um, and with the Texans hopefully taking steps in the right direction probably not going to jump uh and be like you know a huge contender type of thing at all in the afc they might be able to kind of i don't want to say contend for to win the division but definitely give those other teams in that division some problems i mean they could definitely be with the colts uh they could probably steal one off the jaguars it just kind of depends on how what the jaguars do this year because that division is always just so crazy with whatever the teams do and the titans i think the texans could totally still get off the titans as well but Despite all that, John Mechie, because the wide receiver group is kind of lackluster, has the opportunity to actually get on the field and get some chances, again, assuming he's able to play and everything that he's hopefully being expected to play. He has the opportunity to really pair himself now with a young quarterback, establish that early chemistry, and really see what happens. Because again, good back with the potential to develop into a starter is not a bad grade at all. And, you know, I guess now it's the concern of if he can still kind of reach that. But if everything's still there and he's able to bounce back from this, I think that he is probably one of the most forgotten about second year players that can really make a difference on his team. And if, I mean, if he can add, you know, 500 yards and, you know, a couple touchdowns, that's going to that's gonna be huge for CJ Stroud because you, you really can't think that they're going to have Robert Woods, you know, the next three years. Like at some point, he's going to probably leave or even retire. Uh, and of course, you know, Noah Brown is a great receiver. I don't think he's going to become the number one on that team. So it's very possible if Mechie continues to perform, he can definitely rise in that depth chart. And I really think that through all the prospect grades, uh, if he can just bounce back from his health concerns, he could honestly be a great receiver on the, on the Texans. And as far as fans football goes, I mentioned earlier, I don't really know. I'm not, I'm not huge into that. But if he's, I mean, I mean, a proven target, you got to think he could be targeted in late round drafts. Now, I know right now it's probably very risky because you don't know, you know, how much he's going to play next year, all this kind of stuff. But I do think uh, this year is going to be a, as long as he plays, it's going to be an interesting year for him to see where he's at uh, on the field. Because again, it's, you know, it's his rookie year, essentially, and then coming off two huge health issues. Um, it's definitely going to be interesting, but I think... This year is going to be a good sign to see what he kind of has in store for him the following year. And I wouldn't be surprised if he has a bit of a breakout year considering everything he's been through. So I just want to do a short video on this. I'm not sure how long this was. I'm going to guess probably around eight minutes or so. But really, I'm just, you know, getting videos out on the NFL uh, season next year. I'm talking about players. I'm talking about teams. We're doing all kinds of more videos just like this, some longer. Uh, I wouldn't say any shorter. This is probably, probably going to be one of the shorter ones, I would assume. 
But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and hit the subscribe button for more NFL videos. I do NFL and Madden content. NFL, we do videos like this where we talk about all kinds of offseason news and changes. We do NFL tier list videos. We do NFL um, like uh, quiz videos. Can't remember, can't remember that one. And then during the season, of course, we do uh, week picks. So there's all that. And then Madden, we have a Panthers theme team series we do. We do gameplays, pack openings, new promo news, all that kind of stuff. So thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.